Audio check, audio check, one, two, three.
Good evening, everybody. Sorry for the slight delay. Um, we finally got some space for ourselves. Uh, welcome to this planning committee. Uh, I am Councillor Mike Lilly, uh, Chair of the Planning Committee for the next municipal year. Welcome, everybody. Before we start, I think that um, our colleague, um, Councillor Davis, has been taken ill. So I think we send our best regards to, to Robert and hope he makes a speedy recovery and comes back to us on that. Um, so, action in the event of an emergency. There are no practice alarms planned for this evening, so if an alarm sounds, please evacuate the town hall by going down the main staircase <coughs> or the back staircase to the town hall by going, sorry, to the high street and then to the car park behind the town hall in St. Runwalk Street. This meeting is being live streamed to the council's YouTube page and will be available after the meeting. Please for the speakers use microphones at all times and speak directly into the microphone and would participants please mute the microphones when not speaking. Introductions. Members of the committee and officers will introduce themselves starting from my left. Good evening everyone. Councillor Lynn Barton, Shrub End Ward. Councillor Mike Hogg, St Anne's and St John's Wards. Councillor Roger Mannion, Tiptree Ward. Martin Warns, Beerchurch Ward. Councillor Lee Tate for Prettygate Ward. Councillor Sam McCarthy representing Shrub End Ward. Councillor Sarah Naylor, Lexton and Braiswick substituting for Robert Davidson. Sam McLean, Newtown Christchurch. Councillor Jackie McLean, Mark Stanley Ward. Chris Harden, Planning Officer. And Simon Keynes, Development Manager. Robert Carmichael, Democratic Services Officer. Thank you very much. Members of the committee may use electronic devices to access their meeting papers, and visitors are welcome to use mobile phones and other devices, including cameras. But please use them discreetly, set them to silent, and do not use voice or camera flash functions. We may have a break at 8 o'clock subject to the items remaining. There are toilets on every floor in the building and an induction loop in this room. Whilst determination of a plan application is not a quasi-judicial process, unlike certain licensing functions carried out by the local authority, it is a formal administrative process involved in the application of national and local policies. Reference to legislation and case law as well as rules of procedure, rights of appeal, and an expectation that people will act reasonably and fairly. All involved in these decisions should remember that the possibility that an aggrieved party may seek a judicial review and or complain to the Ombudsman on grounds of maladministration or breach of the authorities' code. Item 2, substitutes already heard to Councillor Naylor for Councillor Davison. Item 3, any urgent items? No urgent items. Declarations of interest, councillors. Any declarations? No, none to say. Have your say. If anyone has a petition they wish to present to me on any of the items on the agenda this evening, please do, know, do so now. Item 6, there are no minutes for approval of this meeting. Um, have your say. So we will now move on we, to the applications we have to. We have two applications tonight. Uh, 7.1 is land between 7 and 15 mile away, Colchester. Uh, presenting officer is Chris Harden. Public against is Simon Sorrell. And public for is Robert Pomery. And we have visiting councillor, councillor Roger Buston. Yeah. And then 7.2, Foundation House, one, 1 Long Wire Street, Colchester, and that. So um, we have no speakers for item 2. So 7.2, we could take that on block if members wish to do so. Or does anybody wish to call out that application to speak on? Have we got a proposal then that we... Yeah, I'll propose we take it on block, Councillor McCarthy, is that seconded? Councillor Barton, so we have a vote now on we on to approve 
that uh, 7.2 uh, Foundation House application. That is unanimous, Chair. That's unanimous. Thank you. That's approved with all the conditions involved in that. Uh, I've got to read this little bit. It's, uh, I can confirm that those items have been determined in line with the officer recommendation in the report and amendment sheet, and there will be not further for discussion on those items. Any interested parties in attendance for those items may wish to leave now. Thank you. So now we move on to 7.1, uh, an application that's come back to us after it was deferred by this committee, uh, by some members of the committee that were. Uh, so I hand it over now to Chris to do the report, please. Go. Right, so this is an application for the three dwellings between 7 and 15 Marlow Way. I'll just take you through the scheme again um, and remind you of what the proposal is. So that's the site outlined in red. Um, since the last committee meeting, there have been uh, changes to plot one. So this is the revised street scene and you'll see that uh, the ridge of plot one has been lowered by approximately 0.4 of a metre. So it is now 0.3 above the height of the neighbouring property number seven. So this is the revised street scene. Uh, it essentially involves this area here becoming a small flat roof and then uh, chimneys either end to hide that flat roof. I'll show you a closer up view of that. So that's the closer view of, and you can see the difference between the neighbouring property. And these are the elevations of that revised uh, plot. And this is a 3D street view of that proposal. And this was what was presented to the committee at the last meeting, showing the street scene as built and the original street scene as approved, which showed the dwellings at either end of the uh, site taller than they really were. So that was uh, how the street scene differed in effect. The dwellings either side of the three new dwellings were shown higher than they really are. Hence, the new dwellings uh, are now higher than the neighbouring original properties. Um, so this is what I showed you at last committee and as built plot one 0.71 higher but it would now be 0.3 with the revision. And that is the other end of the site plot three showing uh, the height difference between the neighbouring property of uh, just over 0.5 of a metre as built. And that is plot two as built. So it is only plot one that is being changed from the previous committee. <coughs> You'll note the rear kitchen extensions, which were also built um, taller than was previously approved by around about 0.6 of a metre. That's plot three as built. And this shows the other difference on the site. The red line on this plot uh, number seven, or number seven Marlow Way, uh, shows where it's originally shown on the approved plans, but in reality, the dwelling is a bit closer to the site. So that was shown at the last committee, therefore reducing the gap slightly between the new dwellings and the original dwelling compared to what was expected. So that's a closer view uh, of the difference 
close to the boundary. Uh, this is the aerial view of the plot showing that the 45 degree lines of um, loss of light are not breached. So these are the dotted lines here showing that there's not going to be an overbearing or loss of light in accordance with the council's standards. And similarly, there's not a, a loss of light breach in the council's standards um, from the other plane as well, shown on these drawings. I'll just take you through a reminder of the street scene as built. So the dwellings have now moved on a bit from when I took these photographs, they're virtually complete. That shows the gap between the properties at the rear. This was the rear view when I originally went out on site. Gap between properties. This was where the dwelling was shown slightly incorrectly on the original approval. Uh, this is where they've moved on a bit and uh, completed the windows and the grassed areas and the checking of the height of the kitchen elements to the rear. And these are photographs which have uh, been submitted by a neighbour to show um, the proximity and relationship to the property. And this was a picture of what the site originally looked like. Uh, an open grassed area with a wall. And that's uh, the virtually completed dwellings. Just to remind you of the approved street scene, I think that's there. I'll just take you back now to the drawings as I go through the planning considerations. So first of all, we have received 11 further letters of objection um, since the last committee, and those are listed in the amendment sheet, uh, which was uh, presented yesterday. Uh, those objections have been gone through very carefully by officers and, and considered, so I will bear those in mind when giving the uh, planning consideration assessment. So, in terms of uh, the principle of developing this site, that has already been previously agreed with the original approval, so it's essentially uh, the consideration of the differences between what was originally approved and what was being constructed. And as explained, the differences essentially relate to the relationship in terms of the height to neighbouring properties. Plot 1 was uh, built 0.715 higher than the neighbouring property. So that's this plot here. It would, with the revisions, be 0.3 above the neighbouring property. So that will be with the revisions of a a flat ridge and two chimneys at the end of the dwelling. The uh, plot three dwelling is 0.587 above the neighbouring property, so that's this one here. It's not being amended, so it is simply plot one that is being amended. So the plot three will remain as built. So the key differences are this relationship in height and from our point of view, we still consider that the dwellings would appear satisfactorily in the street scene. The height variations are not unusual in a street scene. Um, so overall, 
the relationship and the visual appearance is considered acceptable. You still get views of the manor to the rear through the gaps. And um, whilst the gap to the neighbouring dwelling at number seven is slightly smaller than anticipated, again, you still get a reasonable gap, which is not considered to represent a visually cramped form of development. Uh, in terms of impact on neighbouring amenity, that is still considered acceptable. It's not considered they would have an overbearing impact or result in a loss of light. The 45 degree rules are met and a daylight sunlight analysis has been undertaken and demonstrates that the BRE standards are met. That includes the difference in the kitchen height and the relationship to neighbouring properties. So in conclusion, it's considered the scheme is visually acceptable and is also acceptable in terms of its impact on residential amenity. So the recommendation is approval. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. And um, can I just clarify that um, we did receive a, an extra letter from the developers, I believe, that they had an offer of to change the scheme, that the first house would be uh, lowered on the first house the roof will be lowered down by uh, uh, x amount but the other two houses would remain the same because yeah. of that so um have we got that that we could put into record that review because basically we we deferred it last time because we wanted the we wanted to go away so the developer could come up with some offers of of how to change things that will keep some people happy and to see where we were because we had three options at the time uh, that was to change the the roofs two was to keep us the same and three was to demolish the houses so um have you got that um i can't find on my it did come through and it was a letter from the, the developers to say that they were offering to do that have you got that do we all receive that have you got a copy of that? I can't, I couldn't see it in there. I haven't missed it. Uh, just, Chairman, just to clarify, yes, they've, they've offered and amended plot one, but they're not amending the other two plots. Okay, plot sorry. One is the one I showed to be amended with the chimneys either end and the right. flattened ridge roof. So that's what I was presenting, the amended plot one. Sorry, beg your pardon, there they are. Thank you, Chris, my mistake. So now we move on to the public speakers. And first we have public against Simon Sorrell, please. Simon, you have three minutes. The bell will go after two and the time will start when you're ready to speak. Thank you. Good evening, committee. I speak on behalf of residents in calling for the proposal, proposed solution to be refused. The deferral asked that the planning office and the applicant investigate options to reduce height to that depicted in the street scene drawings or back to a level members could consider less material. They have failed on both counts. Residents would prefer the houses be removed completely, which of course is still an option before you. However, the minimum acceptable solution is to reduce the height to the, to the level depicted by the drawings with roofs no higher than existing neighbors. Instead, the developer has shown further contempt for the committee by proposing a token gesture, doubtless the cheapest option to meet the planning, officer, the planning officer's woefully low bar of acceptability. What is this option? Shave the ridge off plot one, leave it significantly higher than its existing neighbour, maintain its pitch and hide the flat roof ends with dumb, dummy chimneys. Very contemporary. Meanwhile, plot two's height allegedly matters not because, being sandwiched between its oversized partners, we are told it's not part of the street scene. Nonsense. It's in the street, so it's fundamentally part of the street scene. Plot three also remains unchanged with its different orientation exaggerating, not diminishing its domineering height and bulk. The only alternative mentioned is the impossibility of increasing the height of neighboring properties. Here, we agree. The developer's planning statement makes it sound that it wasn't their fault the houses have been built too high. 
and they're simply doing everyone a favour by considering any alterations. It claims that houses are completely lawful as they stand. However, they accept that the kitchens, clearly visible from adjacent properties, are considerably higher than approved. Therefore, the houses as built are not legal. Hence, the idea that changes to the build are reliant on the applicant's voluntary actions is wishful thinking. The officer's report continues to back the developer on every aspect of their amendment, disregarding residents' opinions and citing their subjective views, and, make, and making a recommendation on the 17th of May before the objections. The report correctly observes that more than one objection has originated from the same address. This is understandable, as some objections are made by groups such as the Residence, Residence Association, members of which have made their objections and expect them to be considered without repetition. This is a moot point, as the planning, officers disregard, the planning office disregards historic objections every time this abominable, abominable case is reconsidered. The Council's undue haste and reduced time to comment on the deferral response will have prevented members seeing objections submitted in the past week until this afternoon. This is undemocratic and flouts the planning process. In closing, the main reason for refusal in the first place was that the scheme was higher than the neighbouring houses. To approve the amendment would be totally inconsistent with that and reward the developer's disregard for process. Given the failure to meet the deferrals criteria, committee is asked to have the roofs replaced to completely remove the height differential or decide the houses should be demolished and open space restored. Thank you. Thank you, and now we have speaking for Robert Pomeroy, please. And the same goes, three minutes and we'll get a bell after two. Good evening, members. My name is Robert Pomeroy. I'm a Charter Town Planner. It's important to be clear that the height of the three houses that have been built on the site are correct and as approved under the original planning permission. In this respect, the houses are lawful and it is true that the matter has revealed that the rear objections, uh, sorry, projections were also built taller than the original uh, proposal. However, this change has no impact on third parties and has been de deemed acceptable by your officers. This was clearly established at the previous committee, so any changes to the height of the proposals now will be done on a voluntary basis and would be required and would not be required to comply with any planning permission or inf or possible enforcement action. As the houses were found to be the correct height when the matter was first raised, there was no reason to not go on and complete them. The key element of this application before you is to alter the street scene drawing, which illustrated the two existing houses flanking the site at the incorrect height. Remember, it was the existing houses that were not correctly represented. Obviously, the applicant is unable to change the existing houses, but they can correct the street scene drawing so that it reflects what has been built in the context. This was the main purpose of the application. The applicant acknowledges the upset of local residents and the committee's disappointment, but it is important to recognize that the error on the street scene drawing was an honest mistake and that <clears throat> what has been built in respect to the height of the dwellings is entirely lawful and in accordance with the planning permission. In response to the resolution of the planning committee, the applicants have engaged with your officers and proposed that the height of plot one, which is adjacent to seven mile away, could be reduced, that it is more consistent with the height of its neighbour. The applicants uh, do not believe that this alteration is necessarily an improvement to the scheme as the approved and built scheme results in no planning harm that has been demonstrated. On that basis, it is not considered to be necessary to reduce the height of all three houses. However, if the committee are of the view that the change proposed to plot one does result in some material improvement, then that change to that plot as proposed will be made following the approval of amended plans. Just picking up on Mr. Sorrell's points, um, the original scheme that was refused by committee was for completely different house types and they were much taller. It wasn't this scheme, it was a completely different scheme. 
Thank you. Thank you. And then we have a visiting councillor. Councillor Roger Bustin, please. You know the procedure, Roger, and you have uh, five minutes. Well, could you use the microphone yes, all the yes, time? Yes, uh, certainly. Before I start, could uh, I ask please for the pictures um, that were viewed last time to be put back on the screen, please? Um, Chris, you kindly did that before. If you could be kind enough so to do again, I'd be much obliged. Yep. Lovely. In fact, the, the, the other one was probably slightly better. That one, that's a nice picture, isn't it? That's what, just so the committee is aware, that's what Marlow Way used to look like before the property's now erected there, um, displaced that large greensward open space, public open space. Right. Um, okay. Ready? Uh, well, yes, we'd actually start the clock when you talked about the. Well, I ask what we'll do is we'll, we will start when you start speaking. Lovely. Okay. Thank you very much again. Right. We're off. Mr. Chairman, I congratulate you and the Vice Chair and members of this committee upon your reappointments to it, as it means that I shouldn't have to go through all the reasons for refusal of this application again, as I only made last month on the 27th of April. So here we are again, again, again. In summary, again, this committee is basically being required to ignore the properties in the application were not built, the specification is agreed. As not to do so would be costly to the developer and too inconvenient. This is not a social housing development, it is a speculative development built solely for the purpose of profit. Thus to have built it incorrectly must be a risk the developer has chosen to run. That this process is awkward for officers who will not wish their targets to pass as many applications as possible to be compromised, I'm sorry these considerations do not override proper process and consideration. Again, what is right is right and what is wrong is wrong. I said before that planning law is still not a subject where you can make it up as you go along. You simply can't come up with convenient and implausible arguments to re-engineer an application that has been by accident or by design fatally compromised as this has. Further arguments are presented to you as to why what the developer has done is both accidental and is de minimis anyway. So it doesn't really matter. It is neither. It does matter. The developer had the perfect opportunity to stop work when the fourth, first floor plate level was achieved, for example, when it must have been pretty obvious that the buildings were going to be too tall. So neither is it accidental nor is it de minimis because Officers had to conclude in the last month's meeting that the properties were undoubtedly built too high. It has been suggested to you that the plans were wrong, not the developers' plans, but the National Ordnance Survey plans upon which the property plans, indeed all development plans, are based. In other words, it is not the properties that are wrong, but the residents' existing properties are not shown at the right height and are too low. No, they aren't. The application properties are too high. It is already accepted and it is common ground that the roof lines of these three houses now built have been built without consideration to the detail of the approved plans. They are higher than they should be. Whether this discrepancy be by three inches or three feet makes no difference in law. It is wrong. There still exist, even in this woke world in which we are now forced to live, principles. Replacement of the large green open space in Marlowe Way, which you have seen, by three oversized and visually unattractive detached houses, residents submit now clear results in that cramped form of development that detracts from and further harms the character of the area. 
That development is clearly contrary to the local plan strategy development PR1, open space, DP15, retention of open space. This loss of public amenity space has and is hugely significant. As before, I'm instructed that residents wish to see the committee refuse this after the event application, impose a demolition order, and instruct enforcement to require that the site be restored to its original state, open greenswood, open to the public. If the committee approves this application tonight, the question seriously has to be asked whether there is any point whatsoever in there actually being a planning committee at all, or indeed, if there is now any requirement to produce proper and accurate plans that Colchester City Council will insist that developers adhere to at all, or if any deviations will simply be nodded through by officers as to do otherwise might lead to an appeal. That's the nub of the matter. Following the recent Stamer and Baybrook case, which occurred in 2020, where the inspector on appeal found that the developer failing to follow the development plan caused serious harm to the local environment and residents' living conditions, I do not doubt that Colchester City Council would win such an appeal. Gentlemen, ladies, very genuine question. Again, otherwise, why are we here? Thank you. Thank you. So, Chris, can we respond to all the public speakers, please? Thank you, Chairman. Um, yes, with regard to Mr. Sorrell, um, there is obviously a, a request to remove the dwellings completely. From our point of view, that would be excessive. We've already agreed the principle of dwellings being built on the site, so it is really the, the differences that need to be considered compared to the approved scheme, which is essentially a different relationship in height. Um, plot two is clearly part of the street scene. Um, I've never said that plot two wasn't part of the street scene. All three new dwellings are part of the street scene. And from our point of view, we consider they do relate satisfactory to that street scene. Um, it's fair to say that the dwellings have not been built in accordance with the plans in respect to the rear kitchens. Um, as explained, they are higher than were approved, but nevertheless, we've indicated and shown in the plans that they would not have a detrimental impact upon neighboring residential amenity and do not fail any of the light and overbearing tests. Um, the report was done before the expiration of the receipt of neighbours letters um, but the comments received by neighbours have been put in the amendment sheet which was available uh, yesterday to members and those comments are being carefully considered by officers essentially they do raise comments in effect that are very very similar to what was previously made in terms of the concerns about the heights etc but those comments have been considered and they don't change officers views in terms of the acceptability of the scheme they've been looked at very carefully they haven't been ignored but officers view is views are that uh, the scheme does relate to the street scene plot one has been slightly lowered there is uh, an improvement there in in that respect um, historic objections are not ignored. The objections in the committee report have been carried forward and are still considered. And they are still shown in the committee report. Um, it's not considered the application was brought to committee in undue haste. It went to committee approximately three or four weeks ago. We got an amended plan in. We've had the 14 day time scale and the amendment sheet covers that. So that's not considered to be undue haste. I think concerns were previously raised that it was taking too long to get to committee. So um, you know, there is a balance if you don't take it to committee. People say it's been too long to get there. So this is considered to be you know, the appropriate time to bring it to committee. All the objections are considered and we've got a scheme in front of us to consider. Um, in terms of Councillor Buston, um, It's difficult to say whether the developer has chosen to risk 
um, this development being built. The, the developer is saying it was an honest mistake. I can't uh, say whether it was or not, but I suspect it was an honest mistake. There's no evidence that it was done on purpose. The changes to the dwelling, the dwellings are not considered to be de minimis, which is why we've got a new planning application in front of us, because um, they didn't accord with the originally approved street scene. Um, and also the kitchens are different. So that is not de minimis. Uh, we are considering it, you know, as a new application, which is why you've got it in front of us. Uh, the ordinance plan was wrong on number seven Marlow Way, which was explained at the previous committee. It's not unusual, to be honest. I've had a previous case very recently where a, a dwelling was shown incorrectly on an ordinance plan and they haven't had many in my career, I must say. I've probably only had about three or four where the ordinance plan is wrong, but clearly in this case it was slightly wrong. But nevertheless, there is still a gap between number seven and plot one, which is considered to be a very reasonable gap and leaves the site appearing not cramped. Um, the loss of open space, which was shown here, was originally approved by committee, so the principle of that loss was agreed. So it is really the differences in height rather than the principle of a loss of open space. Um, Chris, could you stop staring at the screen so we okay. have the, uh, go back to the main bit, please? Thank you. Uh, Councillor Busson has raised the point that it's contrary to local plan policies. From our point of view, we've quoted the correct policies in the local plan, and it's considered to comply with the design policies uh, in the local plan, in particular DM15 and, and SP7. Um, of course, there is a point to have a planning committee. It is the planning committee's decision as to whether they wish to go with the recommendation of approval or not. So I, I think that covers, covers the comment, Chairman. Uh, just one point, Councillor Buston mentioned uh, uh, a plan and inspector case in New Boring County, I believe, uh, as to say that it shows a bit of precedence for that the inspector had refused it there. Uh, do we know anything about that case and can we relate it to this case whatsoever? Uh, I, I don't know. This, I don't know if Simon's familiar with that. Uh, I understand, Chair, that the case referred to by Councillor Buston was a planning inspectorate decision. Um, planning inspectorate decisions vary wildly between inspectors, to be absolutely frank, and uh, are very much the personal opinion of that particular inspector. In the case that Councillor Buston outlined, however, the inspector was able to identify considerable harm that flowed from the breach. Um, it's your officer's professional opinion that there is no such considerable harm in this case. So. We don't think the two cases would be comparable. Um, the, the difference in height in this instance, in the opinion of your officers, does not give rise to any material loss of amenity or harm to the street scene in any material manner. So um, it is quite different, uh, we believe, to the uh, conclusions drawn by the inspector in that particular case. OK, thank you. So over to members now, I think we'll go to the Hall Council first. Councillor Lee Tate, please. I've just got a couple of queries. Um, sorry, move forward. Um, I have a couple of concerns still, and they, they're broadly the same as, as last time. Um, if we are accepting that, or I should say the developer is accepting that uh, there are things that can... My issue is why are we only one house and not all three? It feels a little bit tokenistic or I'll do that and, but in, in agreeing to change one we've accepted that there you know that there's a error that needs to put in right and I do have a little bit of a concern with this sort of slightly downplayed language which is used in in the conversation about being slightly incorrect it is incorrect slightly incorrect um yeah that's it for me what why just the one house Chris thank you chairman I think uh, it's a good question. Certainly, uh, it was put to the 
developer after the committee about their desire for the committee to have them all reduced to make sure they're in line. Um, I can't force the developer to do that. I think there were concerns that there could be a viability issue, but also I think it, the developer view was that this was the one that was the highest in comparison to the neighbouring property. It was the, the 0.7 higher, um, which has now been reduced to 0.3 higher. That the other one, the uh, the other end of the site, plot three was only 0.5 higher and wasn't deemed that uh, they would reduce that, but they would try and reduce the, the one that was the highest above. So um, you know, that is what the developer wants considered, basically. Are you happy with that? Like, if, anybody else any questions? No, nothing at all? Well, in that case, then, are there any, well, it's up for approval, first of all. So we have a, a proposal now for the councillor, uh, Lee Tate, for refusal. Is that second then? Second one by council manager. So I have to ask, what grounds uh, are we refusing this using plan and law? Done it again. Um, I'd like to see a revised plan that takes into consideration all of the um, noted differences against plan rather than just token one. That's that's a deferral, and not a refusal. You ask oh, sorry, to deferral in which the... case? I'm just not happy with what's been resubmitted, so I propose for a deferral. Would you be happy if all three were levelled down? As per the first one, I'd be happy to see different options than just the one. Okay. So, we now are you asking if it be deferred? Are you happy to second the deferral on those? Yes, I am. It is down to councillors on the planning committee that uh, when we refuse things against the planning officers, you have to tell us, we have to come up with reasons for refusal and deferral. So you're asking for it to be deferred because you're not happy with what the developer has offered to do to rectify the height of the houses. Are you happy with those words? Sorry, just so that we can get it in a motion that I can put to, so that we can put to the, so the chair can put to the committee. Um, was it defer to seek amendments on all three dwellings? Yes. Yeah, to seek. Seek. The other two, but not just one, is not doing. It's not taking account of the fact that all three of them are oversized, and we're either saying they're oversized or we're not. We can't say that one's oversized, but okay, those two, you know, we can't, I, I don't feel that that is, uh, my view is that that's not suitable. Okay, so, yeah. no, so. Chair, I, I don't want to speak on behalf of my, of my colleague, but um, I, I think the, the, the point that's trying to be made is if we do defer this, it's to, is to amend all three properties, not just the one. So obviously one has been amended, it's to amend the other two. Is that correct? Is that correct, Councillor Tate? So, so we'd w want it worded like that, I guess. Yeah, so now we're going to read out what we've got down, and then I'll hand it over, I have to hand over to, to Simon to tell us uh, what, what the, the conditions are. Robert. Robert, please. Thank you, Chair. So just, to, just so that we're all aware of this and that to get Council Tate and Councillor Mannion's approval for this as the motion, um, that the committee defer the application to seek amendments for the reduction in height for all three dwellings. Is, are you, is that acceptable to both of you, sir? Correct. Yes. yes. Thank you, Councillor. Simon. Thank you, Chair. Yes, the committee is, of course, entitled to defer it yet again to seek uh, amendments to all three dwellings, and we will, of course, pursue that with 
appropriate uh, vigour, um, and uh, it will be reported back to you. Um, you obviously have a recommendation before you. Um, I'm assuming that uh, you don't want to uh, proceed with the recommendation of approval um, on that basis. Does that, Robert, need to be... Uh, sorry, just to comment on that, Simon. So when we go to the vote, obviously councillors can vote for against on that and then if the motion is carried then that will be passed and it shall be deferred upon those reasons if it is not then it will go back to uh, no motions being on the table and any councillor can put forward a motion thereof after that point if the motion falls just be clear okay so now we have a vote to defer this with the the words and that's been written down, if everybody's happy with that. So now we go to the vote to defer this with the, with the words and conditions that have already been set out. All those in favour of deferral? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Those against? One. Those abstaining? No. So that is deferred. Jackie, yeah. Sorry, did you vote against count for the motion council on that side? So that's nine four. Apologies, Chair. That's nine four and what one abstention. Okay, thank you very much. And so one again, sorry. One against, nine four, one against, one abstention. And so councillors, thank you for that. That now concludes the meeting for this evening. We'll see you at uh, the next one. Thanks very much for attending.